With a new president and CEO set to take the helm at BC Ferries, the company could be changing course. A government decision to allow a reduction in the contracted sailings on major routes is expected to come down soon, but those runs might not be the only ones at risk. Minor routes are facing a massive drop in ridership. Most are not even 50% full. It's making the services difficult to justify, and as Kylie Stanton explains, their worth could soon come into question. Every hour, all day long, ferries sail in and out of this terminal, a vital link to one of the most densely populated islands on the west coast. It's a vibrant community and we really need those connections. But things here could soon change course. The new president and CEO of BC Ferries is tasked with cutting costs, striking a balance between affordability and service. Yeah, there's reasonable expectations in terms of what the ferry system can be. First of all, it has to be financially viable, because without a financially viable ferry system, we don't have anything over the long term. Right now, that's not the case. In the past fiscal year, only one in the company's 26 routes saw passenger growth, and capacity has dipped to as low as 21% on sailings between Skidigate and Alford Bay in the Queen Charlottes. Here on Salt Spring, the numbers aren't much better. Of the three services, the Swartz Bay to Fulford run is most promising, with an annual average of 56.5% capacity and a slight dip in passenger growth. Sawasan to Long Harbour is down to roughly 40% capacity, with 4.4% fewer passengers travelling back and forth. And between Crofton and Vesuvius, sailings are only 38% full and posting a 3.2% drop in traffic. It brings the sustainability of routes like these into question. We're cognizant of the needs of the smaller communities and the, the fact that they would like more service as opposed to less if they had their choice. I think the money should just be put into sailings. I couldn't live with this one going though. Well, this particular time? <laughs> yeah, this particular time. I hope they don't close any of the runs. But we got to be reasonable. There's actually times when our ships sail with more crew than they do passengers. So that's not really good from a cost standpoint. So we've got to take a look at everything. A review into the Coastal Ferries Act has been launched and is expected to be released early in the new year. I think it's fair to say they expect that if increases are necessary that they need to be reasonable and affordable and predictable. It's where critics are counting on getting some answers. The BC Liberals promise stable fares and, uh, and, and good service and uh, we, we've, we've seen the opposite under the Coastal Ferry Act. So I'm looking forward to the recommendations from the Commissioner and hopefully it'll be a, a template for what we can work on. Until decisions are made, the service will continue every hour, all day long. And that brings us to tonight's checkpoint question. How should BC Ferries stabilize its fares? Should there be an increase in the government subsidies or service cuts? You can let us know how you feel about the issue. Tweet us at check underscore news on Facebook at facebook.com slash check news or email checkpoint at checknews.ca. And here are some of your responses from social media. Lucy says definitely an increase in government subsidy. Now it could be the answer according to Michelle, but uh, not in equal parts. And Ian says hot air balloons to replace ferries. There's never a shortage of hot air in Victoria.